This will keep it quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. the three-time world champion, the WWE Hall of Famer, and Billy Ray Snapper in Devil's Rejects. And you, you're listening to the little pod of horrors. The best idea since premarital sex on Halloween. And that's not a bad thing. That monkey is a good thing. Hello everyone. We can put them off. <laughs> <laughs> we got a second in. <laughs> for context, we are recording for the first time ever using Zoom, and we have video. So as I start my intro, Goxie's waving at me like a loon. Thank you, sir. Um, this is also you thought we'd forgotten. Go what? What? <laughs> this is also a historic one. Ever since we started, the April show has always been with you and me in the same room, right? It has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For the, so the first time, April show is everyone separated. Social distancing. And for the first time, we didn't say happy birthday while it was simultaneously our birthdays. Yeah, I may have fallen asleep. We <laughs> <laughs> let the side down. <laughs> so because Finland is two hours ahead of us, for two hours every year... It is our birthday at the same time for two hours. Um, we do try and try and get together, but hey, it, times times are what they are. Um, but we're not going to be talking about that. I've decided. So yeah. nah. Anyway, welcome to the little pod of horrors. That thing you th- you'd forgotten about, you thought we'd forgotten about, and that thing you'd forgotten that we thought we maybe knew how to do, but we haven't, and we're here. And there you go. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> So, um, Gogsy's um, sitting next to a, a haunted mirror in Indiana, and Timo is in um, the void, the, it, it, the Egyptian crypt with voice-controlled lights in Finland. <laughs> <laughs> As we found out earlier, tell them how you turn your lights on, Timo. <laughs> it's just a voice command. Just I just yell at my yell at Siri. I just yell Aziz light. I love it. Like, if I was going to put a voice command for that, that's probably what I would have chosen as well, which that is was the, a lot. That was the first one I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, we have no idea when us three last met again and boiled things over a cauldron. It was a very fucking long time ago. I want to say it's over a year. Did Are we, we do one in 2019? <laughs> I... I... 
I don't know. It all went to shit at some point. I know that much. (laughs) Yeah, considering everything that's happened in the past year, it must have been Mm. over a year ago that we recorded last. Has to be. I I know I've done odd shows here and there, but it's not been us three. No. So it took an international pandemic (laughs) to force us into this position. That's what it takes, ladies and gentlemen. And four weeks of isolation before we got our shit together. (laughs) You guys are isolated. I'm not allowed to be isolated, so... Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Gogsy is as busy as ever. Um, In fact, I'm not exactly not busy. Uh, We are all still working, actually. Yeah. Um, I'm doing slightly less work work, but um, to sort of help some people out and then get rid of the boredom and keep myself in shape, uh, we're teaching live workouts pretty much every day other than Sunday online. So that's added quite massively to the workload, which I didn't quite realize we were going to end up doing so many. Because for weeks, people were saying, are you going to do workouts? And I was like, no, there's an app for that. And then I thought, you know what, people might appreciate it. So we started doing it and people did. And then we did more. And then we started doing private classes on Zoom so we could see what they were doing. And then before you know, it's a thing. So that's where we are. Uh, so this, we don't have a plan for this. There isn't a, we've all watched a movie we're going to bring you. Um, we just wanted to talk really and thought if we're going to do it, you might as well get to share it. And we're just going to shoot the <laughs> shit really. Cause it's been so long. <laughs> Pretty much. We are. <laughs> so, I mean, I've been to a, no, I haven't done a shot. I didn't do, did I do a Fright Fest roundup? I don't even remember for August. Yes, you did. Cause I think I that's did. the one where your microphone didn't work. So it picked up something else i think oh yes yes i did manage to pull in a victim to help me with that didn't i but i didn't do glasgow or halloween no i don't think so or celluloid screams all of which i went to so sorry but the last festival will be this year yeah yeah well yeah so far yeah fingers crossed for august it's very outlying but it may or may not happen um so in, in, in that time, I haven't been watching a lot of horror off my own back other than when I have gone to festivals, um, but I've still seen 20 more horror films per month than Timo has. True. <laughs> I don't think I've watched a horror film. I don't remember when. Last time I watched one. I can't remember one. I did, I did queue up uh, Midsommar just the other day, and I was going to watch it Friday, but... Yeah. Then I fell asleep. <laughs> I'm old. There's the news, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. In over a year, Timo nearly watched a horror film. <laughs> the only horror podcast online that brings you two horror fans and somebody who tries. <laughs> tries. <laughs> Reluctantly. <sighs> and Gogsy, you've just not had any time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I haven't. Um, sorry, my recording looks really weird. Yeah, mine too. I think it's doing it in stereo. Sorry. Um, no, I haven't. I watched one, no. It took me like three settings to watch it. So that was something. <laughs> it was uh, the one I didn't manage to watch. <laughs> and then I did remember that I watched a Netflix TV series which falls into our realm. Okay. And I think that's probably it. Uh, yeah, my list has grown by like a million, but um, <laughs> Netflix is putting them on there way quicker than I think anybody can watch anything. So it's getting ridiculous amount of stuff getting released. Yeah, I've got quite a lot of services now, and across all of them, yeah, can't keep up. Yeah. Um, no. I don't think anybody can. Yeah, okay. Finland finally has most of the services you guys have. But just not the content. Have you got Shudder now, then? No. 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 That I mean, their catalogue is wildly varied anyway, so you'd probably have, like, three Finnish films on there if you did get it. <laughs> yeah, because you found that- a Finnish horror film, right? And you asked me if I've seen it, and I haven't seen it, and it's not available anywhere here. <laughs> Actually, I think it was a superhero film. Yeah, it's a superhero horror film. Gory sort of thing. It's I I oh. I want to say it's gory. 
I haven't seen I'll it. I'll tell you where I saw that. I saw that Mark Kermode was doing uh, there's a Secrets of Cinema TV show or something like that. And he did a special on superheroes. And he was, I thought, oh, that's going to be all Mar- MCU and stuff like that, a bit of Spider Man. And he did sort of broaden it. And he sh- just showed a screenshot of that film and that superhero. And I was like, holy shit, that's finished. I'll ask Tebow. He, he must have seen it or heard of it or something. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'd heard of it, but it's not available anywhere. It's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. Gogsy, I have to ask, is that a Flintstones sock over your microphone? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like yeah, an upside down... The Explorer. Oh, okay. It looks like an upside down Betty Rubble. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Top flight recording gear. Yes, it, is. <laughs> it does the job. I've lost all my stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> in a box somewhere when I thought I was going to move six months ago but or eight months ago but that didn't happen so I just oh. haven't unboxed from that rebo- from that boxing I'm so happy I when I moved I put all my electronics in one place so I knew where everything was instead of putting them in, in boxes in different places as I was going to do because I was going to store all my recording gear in the uh, like the storage area but huh. then I was like Nah, they're kind of electronic, so I'll put them in, in the house and like oh, the apartment. I was like, I was so happy today to actually find them, <laughs> find all yes. of them. You did better than me. I still can't find my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that long. I, I mean, Timo's not only in a different residence; he's in a different city. Yeah, since we last did this. <laughs> yeah, and Gogsy would have been. <laughs> yes, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> not- yeah, since we last recorded, I've changed jobs, changed cities. Basically, started You've got the in... same cat. Yeah, the cat's still the same. He's around here somewhere, being unusually <laughs> oh, quiet. We, we know he'll start interrupting in about twenty minutes when he gets pissed off with you, not giving him all the attention. He's been really good though when I'm working, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's almost like he knows. Yeah. It just, just started. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I did say, like, bring a thing to talk about each sort of... Uh, <laughs> hands up from Timo. You can go first, <laughs> sir. I actually have two. If we, if I have one I have one that I'm sure will count, but I also have another one which is kind of iffy. Uh, have you guys watched... Uh, and now I'm blanking on the name. Oh, that's good. This is quality content right here. Castlevania on Netflix. Have you been watching uh, it? Season one. I haven't watched the newer stuff. There's limits. I didn't even know it was on. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really good. So, and I'm counting it as horror because it's you know vampires and stuff. It kind but, of there's some gory bits. Yeah, yeah. But you know me. I don't know if gory is scary. Never. Nimitz, please. <laughs> I jinxed it. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I invoked yes, the yeah. Nimitz. <laughs> so I'm counting it. I, I, I'm, I'm really liking that show. I still haven't started season three, but it's it's on season my to-do list. Season already? Yeah. Uh, three came out just like a week ago or something. Wow, I am behind. Yeah. I was still building up to watching season two. I enjoyed the first one. I got no... Attachment to the original property, but I didn't really. I wasn't a Nintendo boy. Um, yeah, I've never played the game. I don't. I didn't know it, practically anything about it before I started watching it, and then I started watching it and realized I, I've passively consumed or learned a lot about the show <laughs> from just the <laughs> internet. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's where that comes from, right? That's that's where Alucard is from. <laughs> That's a, it's a weird modern phenomena that you feel like you know a property and that you have watched a property and you are familiar with it and then you realise actually I've never watched that I've just absorbed memes, comments, podcasts yeah. all these other things about it but I've never actually sat and watched it myself which yeah. actually one of mine comes into that which I'll bring up later But um, what about you Gogsy? Um, you want my TV show or my movie? which one do you want? Oof. Uh, TV. TV. Seeing as Timo did TV. <laughs> okay. Uh, I watched Daybreak, which was on Netflix, the TV series. Okay. There's a TV uh, series, Daybreak? 
Yeah. So it sounds like vampires as well. No, it's based on it's based on a graphic novel, I think. Um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've watched this. Uh, but it's about it's set in the apocalypse where all the adults die, and the kids are left to kind of run the world. Um, and it's That's scarily topical. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> and it's kind of set where oh I don't know what kind of style is it well. I suppose it's a bit like a Parks and Rec type style where everybody's turning around and talking to the camera and all that fun stuff. A mockumentary? Yes, thank you. Um, but it's actually pretty good. Um, so what is it? It does kind of fit into a, a realm that has a lot of gore in it. Um, a few scares and stuff and that type thing. But it's not a, not a bad show. Uh, it's ten is it funny I though? Think. Yeah, it's oh. a lot of laughs in there. Okay, um, right. So yeah, it's just I'll enjoy it then. tongue in cheek stuff, and I think you'll enjoy it. There's a guy that goes around with a big samurai sword, um, and there are a few weird. I think there's like different gangs or groupings of people, um, and then one of the gangs puts on like a American Idol show, and if the guy, if the head honcho doesn't like it, then he puts him in the pit and he gets eaten by all the zombie adults type thing so it's quite funny but it's worth a watch I mean I think it's like <laughs> 40 minutes or so <laughs> it's so sick what was the film I went to see I went to see um, oh, that, oh The Hunted 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 is that the one I want to see film? that it's not is, available is yet the hunt, yes. Yeah. Um, it's really fucking good. I really enjoyed it, um, but I was lamenting not seeing it with a fright fest audience. I really was. They were like, oh, "There's a couple of really fucking brutal bits, but it's that kind of way brutal." Um, and like, I was proper outspoken, just like this. I like no one else in the cinema even tittered. Nothing. <laughs> and I was just like, "Ah, oh, come on, <laughs> that was funny." <laughs> He didn't need that head. Yeah, I, I can't remember that's what it was, but it, it's just a couple of like, I just know like with Fright Fest, it would have just been a way. Yeah. So, um, well worth a look. You're not wasting your time with that one. No, it came out here not that long ago before the cinema shut down. Yeah, I think they released it here. It was the end of the week. It had its cinematic run because at the end of that, that was, I think the last film we saw before they shut the cinemas. Yeah. Mm. Actually, you know, Visible Man was, which. Meh. Yeah, that's all the trailer for that, because they've all popped up online, but I am not paying 20 bucks to rent a movie, so. Nah. Um, so 20 bucks to rent? Yes. That's disgusting. What? Um, they're charging you cinema prices, because you can't get the cinema. It's only fair, I guess. Yeah, but I don't have a cinema TV or a cinema screen or a cinema chair and stuff, so. No. You know. <laughs> Nobody's making you popcorn. <laughs> no, yeah. not even the kids. But um, I just need to beat them more. But because yeah. <laughs> I would have watched tons of new releases if it was like the, the normal red price, like six or seven bucks or whatever. I thought that's fair, but I'm not paying twenty bucks. No, no that's I mean, too much. Sorry, Hollywood, you make enough money. So, <coughs> yeah. um, you're not getting my twenty bucks. Well, Invisible Man was like it's got some good bits, and it's a fairly sound concept but there are too many just the dumb moments for me and it okay. took me out of it i'm like you're not acting like an intelligent human right now and that that is a surefire way to lose me always yeah. um and the other thing is if okay if maybe it's just me and i've never trained in jujitsu okay this is i've just watched other people do it but if you were invisible and you attacked me from behind or grabbed my leg it wouldn't matter that I couldn't see you because my reaction would be to grab the thing that's grabbing me, which would be a wrist. By extension, you would then have a shoulder and then a neck and then a face or a body. I could somehow grapple you, arm bar you, grab you, do something to defend myself. The fact that people are completely defensive because the attacking force is invisible is bullshit because your natural human survival instincts would kick in and you would just smash said thing grab said thing like i would try and maintain contact and a vice-like grip on something and then mm. i'd know where i was like oh that's a breasticle 
there's a head above a breasticle smash <laughs> I don't know just stuff like that was really winding me up because I, films where they downplay the human instinct to survive like nowadays you don't get away with it because we all know that we can do better in films because people do anyway mm. that was my <laughs> thoughts on that one anyway um, that's like the first Invisible Man movie in a really long time isn't it I think so. Yeah. Just the, I mean, the Kevin one I Bacon one? Man. Yeah. 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 Which was. I didn't hate, actually. I thought that was pretty good. And at the time, the special effects were pretty impressive, as yes. I recall. But that was a um, long time ago. Nimitz has a lot of. 90s. A lot of things to say about this topic, apparently. <laughs> he really doesn't like you talking to other people. No. <laughs> what was he just standing looking at you? No. He's, <laughs> he's sitting. And looking at a wall and just making noise. <laughs> he can see the invisible man. Yeah, that's Could what be. it is. Animals are always the most intelligent person in the room. We know this. Yes. <laughs> it is known. He sees dead people. <laughs> so um, going into this year, um, obviously Fright Fest Glasgow is usually late March, early April, uh, late February, early March. And uh, this year was the 6th of March. Uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go because I've got to go to... Where were we going? We were going somewhere. Oh, yeah, I've got my this bike mad thousand kilometers in a day bike challenge I was supposed to be doing in May. Um, so I was going to train for that and I was going to go to Spain and train for that. And I thought, no, it's too much expense. I can't do Fright Fest as well. And then it sort of got to the point of... I don't think we were thinking things were going to be cancelled even at that point, but I just happened to be working from home that day, saw a thing pop up saying, I can't get to Fright Fest, my ticket's available, does anyone want it? And I just went, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One hour of frantic Googling later and some negotiations, and I'd booked flights and a hotel, and I was off to Glasgow at like the drop of a hat, two days Dang. before the event. Yeah. Um, it was very cool because the seat was next to my friend Mal, which I didn't realise until later on, so that was cool. Um, so I arrived there on the Friday. Now, Fright First Glasgow is Friday, Saturday, and then you come home Sunday. Uh, there's a couple of films on the Thursday night, uh, one of which was Death of a Vlogger, which I've heard good things about, which is a, a Glasgow film, I believe. Um, the one before that was Synchronic. Now, I saw Synchronic at uh, Celluloid Screams, and it's by the same directors whose names I can never remember. I think one of them is Justin. There you go. Shows my prowess. Um, <laughs> and they did Resolution and The Endless. Uh, I haven't seen Resolution yet. I'm trying to track it down. But The Endless I really enjoyed uh, in previous years there. And Synchronic is a really cool idea whereby someone takes a drug um, and it displaces them in time. So like where you're sitting right now, it just sends you to a different point in time and everything just sort of fades away. <laughs> So, like, if you were in a building that didn't used to be a building, you'll suddenly find yourself in a swamp, etc. Um, and somebody goes missing, and it's about a guy trying to track him down. Um, it stars the bloke whose name I can never... And I think he's Anthony something, so I'm good on the first names today. Uh, who plays Falcon in the MCU. Might be wrong. Anthony anyway. Mackey. Ah, so I did get a name right. Good, I'm, I'm getting there. I, I was <laughs> just watching a movie with him in when we started this. <laughs> I really like him, and kidding. he's... Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he he's also superb in Altered Carbon season two, which I really enjoyed again as well. Yeah, in fact, that, I think that I enjoyed was good. season two more than one. Yeah, me too. Hmm. Haven't watched any of it. Mm. Ah, it's very good. It's very good. Um, it has some quite nasty moments in that as well, actually. So it's it's a good mix of everything. Anyway, so Synchronic played and uh, went down a storm. People really liked it. So on the Friday, Fifty Shades of Grey guy in there. Is it not? Oh yes, yes, it's his partner. So, yeah. You, you like what do you mean, my Fifty Shades of Grey guy? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I just out of the three of us, you've watched it. I haven't. I no, I've been. No, I've I been. I've been put under the duress to watch it more often. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. Then. So there's your Fifty Shades of Grey guy. No hashtag not mine. Is Lavinia trying to tell you something? Making you watch it over <laughs> and over again. It's the tip. Hint, hint. There's a thing on the bottom of my screen. What's it doing? <laughs> oh no, God, I didn't know it did that. Oh, go away. Right, anyway. So, 
uh, yeah. So the Friday I had to work, um, and then I went from work to Gatwick Airport. So work was a place called Broadstairs, which is basically the bottom right-hand corner of the UK. <laughs> I then ended the day in the top left-hand corner of the UK in Glasgow. I'm not the top. I know Scottish people would argue with that, but it was a bloody long trek. Um, ran there as fast as I could and got there just as a film called A Ghost Waits was starting. Uh, got to my seat and there was a scruffy nerd herder, nerf herder sitting there um, and sort of said, oh, excuse me, mate, sorry, that's my seat. Uh, he said, oh, yeah, okay, sit down. Um, and then realized the next day after all that that I was actually sitting next to Joe Bagos for the whole film and never said a word to him. So, yeah, that was well done, boss. Um, <laughs> we'll get to who Joe Bagos is in a minute. Uh, so there were... I've heard reviews of the other films beforehand and there was some good stuff. I think only one of them was slightly more duffy than the rest. Um, but I didn't like feel like I'd missed anything amazing by that point. Mm-hmm. Um, A Ghost Waits is an interesting... Uh, you, it, you'll probably never see it. I don't, I don't know what kind of release it's likely to get. It's shot in black and white in a house and it's basically a guy who's supposed to be doing up a house to sell and it's haunted. But it turns out it's haunted by a ghost who is there on behalf of an agency who pays them to be there. Well, I don't pay them, but they're expected to be there to do a job of making sure nobody moves in and lives there. And it sort of doesn't work out. And this agent ghost ends up forming a relationship with a guy trying to clear the house. Um, It's really charming and funny in places, but it suffers quite a bit from production value issues. Um, Performance is pretty good. But yeah, it wasn't... Some people loved it, but it wasn't exactly for me. Oh, see, he just wanted to be on camera. Now he's happy, just <laughs> stealing the limelight. Yeah. Now he's going to be a pillow for you. <laughs> there you go. That's a good spot. Great for the audio. Um, <laughs> so, Theater of the mind. Yeah. Um, so the next film on the Friday was the Mortuary Collection, uh, which the director was at, and he was a lovely bloke. And I, I started talking to him, but then they very annoyingly started his film and interrupted it. I know that was the next day, sorry. They started the next film the next morning. That was when I was talking to him. Um, but he was really, like, happy to talk to you about his movie and stuff. And he did this intro, and he made it sound like, oh, yeah, you know, we made, like, a load of short films. We tried to get the money together, and the budget was a problem, and we really struggled. And you think, oh, yeah, going into it, it's like he was making excuses. This was going to be, like, really low rent somehow. <laughs> and uh, he's, yeah, we shot in the same town as the Goonies, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, opening scene, small Asian lad on a push bike, cycling through town you can see the rock in the distance from the goonies and you're like holy shit this grade this camera like everything is spot on you feel like you're in the goonies straight away it was like well that was intentional (laughs) then he pulls up to this creepy old house on a hill and the set design the production value that it was just brilliant like it just didn't look so it won me with a look before anything happened and then the door opens and then there's this really made up creepy looking clancy brown (laughs) playing the mortician and he's fantastic he gets um, around his voice he does his voice is aged to the point that it was just perfection for this role and he's creepy but charming but and i thought i it's like to me it's like the role he was always destined to play other than the kurgan obviously i saw a sign out front help wanted Yes. Have you any experience in the mortuary arts? No, but I'm a fast learner. Every corpse tells a story. It is our task to listen, to uncover the clues and extract the truth. So these are all stories about how people died? Not just how, my dear. Why? Look closer. The devil is in the detail. (laughs) Well, I didn't see that one coming. Um, 
And then it's like an anthology piece. Lots of stories about how the bodies end up in the mortuary. And some of it's absolutely superb. I loved this. It was, it started at 11 p.m. So if it had a moment's dross or like filler or anything, after the day I'd had, I'd have been asleep. No way it'd have lasted. And I was awake till the end of that. Um, Really good film. So I'm assuming that's going to get a pretty good, probably VOD release. I don't think it's going to be a cinema thing. Um, so moving on to the Saturday, we had a film called Anderson Falls, which I'd seen a trailer for, and it's that guy whose name I can never remember who does lots of computer game stuff, but has also been in films and stuff. He was the um, icy, is it the icy one from X Men? The young lad I, liked oh, Joanna oh, Quinn's oh, character. Yeah. yeah, him. Yeah, he does <laughs> loads of. Quick enough. He's in like that Quantum Break. He's in. Man of Medan, I think it is. I think he's in from Until Dawn, like all these mocap, really deep no, it, stories. No, it's his brother who's games. in. His brother is in Until Dawn. Oh, is it? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> just you looks see exactly. Him a lot. Ashmore. Yes, <laughs> and it's Aaron Ashmore is in. in... It's his twin brother. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I didn't know. He's so that's why they look alike. Ah, that's why he seems so prolific when he's not. <laughs> Anyway, I'd see the trailers for Anderson Falls, and I didn't realise until it started playing on the Saturday that that's what it was, and because I'd seen it in normal cinemas, and I'd watched that trailer and just gone, meh. <laughs> Looks like your average crime procedural, but that was supposed to start the day, so no harm, no foul. Uh, didn't work. Something wrong with the file, they couldn't play it. Oh. So they ended up moving a Night of Horror, Nightmare Radio, which was our playing out at the end of Saturday film, and they played that first. Okay. <laughs> Another anthology piece. And the way they're going to put this anthology piece together is have a guy with a very big beard sitting in a radio studio, much looking like I do now, and going, Yes, welcome to Nightmare Radio, where we tell you spooky stories. And then someone rings up for help and is like, Oh, that sounds really bad. I'd call the police if I were you. Anyway, while you're dying, that reminds me of a story where you say, What the fuck are you doing? Um. <laughs> It was pretty bad. I mean, some of the shorts were had a charm to them, but you could see they just... And, like, one of the shorts I'd have seen as a short at a horror festival. So you're realising, okay, so this is a poorly made string together of already existing fairly good short movies, which on their own right probably would have done a lot better. But the kick in the pants for most people was when it got to the middle of the film and the Spanish short film came on with no fucking subtitles. <laughs> I watched at least 15 people just go, yeah, fuck this, I'm going to the coffee shop. <laughs> I'll just walk out. <laughs> um, and then uh, me and Scott from Scott and Liam versus Evil, which if you're not listening to that podcast, you absolutely should be. There you go. Shameless plug. Those guys are awesome. And they always go to Fright Fest Glasgow. Uh, he speaks Spanish as well. So me and him were sort of translating for the people next to us because I was getting bits of it. Um, and that was actually a pretty good short, which unfortunately got spoiled by them stopping the film, rewinding it 10 minutes, putting it back on and the subtitle's still not working <laughs> so I think oh, man. everyone has sort of reached maximum fuck this movie by that point um, but thankfully that was the only like it was tail ended by shite so like if you'd slept in and missed the first movie and decided to sack off the last movie you'd have had a really good day <laughs> and a lot of people do yeah. that so I don't think it affected it because the next film find this however you can find this like Put it up on the priority list. It's called A Zombie for Sale. It's a Korean movie about a family who... They're, 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 there's an engineering place nearby. They live in the boonies and there's lots of jokes about it being a buttfuck town in the middle of nowhere. Kind of where Gogsy lives. And... Um, <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, and, and this zombie wanders into town and bites someone. You think, oh so done with zombie movies we're going to have another zombie outbreak but it's the it's the father that they or the grandfather of the family that gets bitten and he lives in a caravan outside of the gas station and um, he comes in the next day and his his hair's not as grey and he's less lines on his face and he's youthful and invigorated and all this kind of stuff and they realise oh we might be onto something here so they sort of capture the zombie and then have all the old people in town come by pay them money stick their arm through the wall to get bitten by the zombie <laughs> it's That's really cool. good it's different it's funny 
It's brilliantly well shot. It's performed superbly. The humour is on point the whole time. Um, in fact, I think I came out saying the laughs in that film were almost airplane level in terms of their frequency and the fact that they didn't drop in quality. Uh, I, I giggled my way through that whole film. So it's it's really like that might be my film of the festival, actually. Wow. It's really, really good. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping it gets a wide distribution. I haven't heard anything yet. Uh, the next film uh, is set in the UK, which is normally a right for me, <laughs> which I shouldn't be like that, but I sort of am. Um, and it's about a, a girl who used to be a nurse and is now in palliative care sort of privately and goes to work for this celebrity lady. And she's very, very religious and is sort of suffering her own demons along the way. Can't really say much more than that other than to say this is a slow burn, really well handled, makes you proper uncomfortable at times and just pays off in a really well done way. And it doesn't, it's not exploitative. It doesn't overdo it and it doesn't labor the point too much. It just leaves you wanting to talk about the film. And it's one of those films that just stays with you. Um, people loved it. Maybe more than I did, but it's, I would say it's well, well worth a look. And then, then uh, St. Maud. St. Maud, M A D. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's a good sort of, uh, let's talk about religion. <laughs> um, and then the next film was Butt Boy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> it's what you think it is. <laughs> There's a guy who's in a pretty loveless marriage he's in a bit of a shitty job where his boss does this really annoying rap at the beginning of mondays to encourage everybody i'm like please kill him oh, now no, no. kill him now um <laughs> so yeah they, they sort of lay out his shitty life and then he goes to the doctor and the doctor does a routine prostate exam because of his age and his face is like hmm. <laughs> and begins to think that you know Maybe that shouldn't be the last time something like that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Some various objects start to mysteriously disappear around the house. And the objects get alarmingly larger. None of this is graphic, by the way. None of it is all implied. What do you mean disappear? Um, they don't come back? They don't come back. Nothing comes back. <laughs> okay. And I can't say more than that. But... Um, the thing that's absolutely superb about this movie, and it caused some dissent with people I talked about, because some people didn't like that it did this. A lot of us did, in that it's played 100% straight. No one's giggling. No one's having a gag. Pun no intended. one's looking at the... <laughs> no one's looking at the camera breaking the fourth wall. There's none of that. It is just... No, this is absolutely serious. We have to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> So, that's the kind of jokes but then it's but it's delivered completely straight so of course the audience falls about laughing but everyone on screen is like this is serious <laughs> I loved it <laughs> loved it um, we, we've actually promised coming out of it because Duncan McLeish from the podcast Under the Stairs was there as well and obviously after every couple of films I'd run up the back because they were sitting in the hot seats at the top and uh, we sort of compare notes on the on the films and we're going to do a show on this so we'll do a bit where it's non-spoiler. Then we'll go into spoiler territory because we just want to unpick this movie a bit more. I think it'll be fun podcasting. So we're, we're trying to get a date in the diary now. So that's coming. <laughs> so butt boy, keep an butt eye boy. out. Boy. <laughs> and then following that was VFW, which stands for Veterans of the Foreign Wars. Veterans War. of Foreign Wars. Yeah. Um, which is like a, a bar, basically. Now, this is the next film from Joe Bagos, who you may rem remember from The Mind's Eye and Bliss, which did huge business last year at both Fright Fest and Celluloid Screams. People loved it. It's now on Shudder UK. Um, I know some people who are just completely in love with that movie. Um, it's kind of a trippy head fuck about a painter who sort of falls in with some vampires, kind of, and there's just lots of heavy metal, paint, nudity, blood, and black cocaine. You don't need to know any more than that. So um, <laughs> this this film, um, in fact, if you want to do your IMDb bit, look up the cast list for this, VFW, because 
the men he gets together in a room to 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 perform this movie you'll be like holy shit um i've actually got a bit of a q and a so i'll edit this in but i actually asked him the question about that dynamic um So, this is obviously the latest one. Joe Boyd's popped up. Joe Bebos. Hey! Absolutely. Joe Bebos. Um, this is his is it third or fourth time in Glasgow. Third. Third. So, and he's always a great guest. And obviously we did Bliss in London uh, for, in Fright Fest on the IMAX, which blew everybody away. This is a very, very different uh, film to that. Please welcome back to Glasgow, Mr. Joe Bigos! What's going on, guys? Uh, I am so stoked. I'm sure this will be a lot, but um, this is one of the most exciting places to show it because you guys are so fucking insane. Um, and we're in the prime Saturday night slot, which I'm so happy about. Uh, this is just a fun, white knuckle, 90 minute exploitation movie. Um, a lot of people bring stuff from their movies, and I kind of brought something from my movie. Um, because throughout the film, the entire cast downs about, I don't know, 60 or 70 shots. So I have multiple bottles of whiskey here. I don't want to get anybody in trouble, so we have some specific rules. But I've got about 50 shots here that I want to give to all of you before this movie. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the is, you gotta come down here and you gotta shoot it down here with me. So we're all gonna take a big shot to Fright Fest and exploitation cinema and Woo! fucking horror movies. Yeah! Yeah. So we're gonna go in an orderly line and get some fucking whiskey flowing through your sick bastards. <laughs> yes. And I sat over on those stairs, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna watch the first five minutes, see how it goes. And five minutes, and I was like, eh, I think I'm gonna stay <laughs> because you motherfuckers loved us so much, and the way that you're reacting to everything, I just haven't heard. Like, it's great, and it's so cool because uh, VFWs aren't really that uh, apparent here. And when I read the script, I didn't know what the fuck a VFW was. Looked it up, um, and now. As I'm driving around Los Angeles, I see a fucking VFW on every road. Um, so the fact that you guys aren't like in tune with that, like much like I was, and you still react to it, it's so fucking cool. Um, but Vietnam vets and post-apocalyptic games are my two favorite. Two <laughs> 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 favorite groups to put on screen. So like, I feel like this is the only movie where you can make that work logically. Now I'm going to throw it straight over to you guys because obviously Joe's going to be around for the rest of the night. Blah blah. Possibly need to start last week. So whiskey, straight over to you. We're going to give you a Blu-ray. Blah blah blah. So that lady there. Take two. Hi Joe. Uh, Hi. Really enjoyed that. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, I really enjoyed that. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much. I just wanted to know: Do you intend to kill Graham Skinner in film? <laughs> <laughs> Every single movie, I assure you. Uh, I'm going to look for more and more ridiculous ways to do it. Um, that's going to be my end. Uh, one of my greatest um... Okay. Let's go. I, I loved it. Thank you. Um, oh, the... Oh. oh. Mike. Sorry. I almost forget this. Um, with a bar full of so many big personalities we all know and love from film, like, there was a real chemistry between them on screen. Um, how much of that was happening behind takes? Like, how did they get on? So I have a secret for you. Uh, I was not allowed to rewrite the dialogue in this movie, which really pissed me off. So most of what you see is improv. Uh, so we went in and we kind of, um, we had a week of rehearsal in this movie, which is really, really rare for a movie of this size. This movie's about $700,000 American. 720000 American. Um, so we go in and rehearsal and you've got, eight, you've got these fucking actors working all these scenes and it's like, well, why are we gonna stick to the dialogue? Let's like, we know the characters, let's figure it out. So the fact that I got to be in the room with those guys for a week straight, and we got to work all that stuff out, like we really found everything together. And um, while a lot of these seeds were on page, we, those guys mostly really made that bloom, and they all worked together. And those, as much as it uh, sounds unbelievable, there was not one ego amongst every single one of these actors. They were all so fucking cool, and I feel like None of them wanted to be the odd man out, so they were all trying to one-up each other. 
And it was just, it was the most beautiful experience. You know, I was so anxious about staging eight actors at once who have 350 collective years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> because I've done effects, I've done action, but putting eight actors in one scene, and like you have to figure out where they're gonna go. Every single one of them has to land somewhere, say a line, everything's gonna change. That shit is fucking hard. <laughs> uh, and you know, these guys were so cool about it, and it was really a collaboration, like they're the best. They, they taught me so much about directing, and um, it made me learn how appreciative you can be of actors. You know, being sorry from there. And how was it working with Fangoria? Uh, Fangoria is really cool. Um, it's interesting because I've made my first three movies by myself. I produced them from the ground up, so uh, having somebody try to tell you what to do is very interesting. <laughs> uh, but to their credit, um, they let me do my thing. Uh, there was a lot of arguments, but in the end, I got final cut, I got my cast, I got to do everything I wanted. And they watched this movie and they said, we think it's kind of dark. It's really like lit dark. We should brighten it up. And I said, absolutely fucking not. And they said, whatever you want. And, uh, so, you know what? Props to them. Uh, what's the next, Joe? What's, what's after this? Whatever somebody wants to write a check for, I've been writing a werewolf movie, which obviously needs a big budget because I'm going to do all that motherfucking shit animatronic. Um, I have a time travel movie and I have a robot movie, so. Whatever somebody wants to finance first, I think is what's going to go next. All three sound great. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Joe Pegos. Thank you. Woo! Thank you. 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 Thank it's Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's very exploitation-y. It's, it's very much of a style, but because of those characters and those performers, it carries really well. And there's some really funny bits and there's some gloriously violent bits. Um, yeah, really enjoy it. So for the sake of Timo, I'll say it's the guy who plays the Sergeant Major type dude from Avatar who's in the mech at the end. Yeah. Um, it's the guy who is I was a Nam from um, Dust Till Dawn the ah, black guy, okay. yeah. I not remember his name either Fred you've Williams. got uh, William something who is from Demon Knight Sadler. those who remember that, William Sadler, yep yeah, he's uh -huh. brilliant yeah, so, like put, so they're all sort of grizzled old acting vets pretending to be grizzled old war vets <laughs> in a bar <laughs> drinking shot after shot of whiskey I mean, what could go wrong? Give that to Joe Bagos. You've got a really good film on your hands. So, yeah. Let's get some cool names in it. It is. Yeah, yeah. it's well worth a look. And that's out already. I think Arrow have got it on release. So, um, one thing I have done, um, because Arrow pick up so many good titles, is I've actually subscribed to Arrow's channel on Apple TV+. Plus. So, I get most of the Arrow releases on there. So, I'm sort of oh. working my way through that. And they've got Dave Makes a Maze on there, which I haven't seen yet. So that's on my watch list. And for a fiver a month, it's worth doing. Because I'm, I'm never going to buy the... Bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to buy the box sets and the, uh, the amount of times I mean to and don't. Like, I never bought the Hellraiser box set. They've got all of the Phantasms on there. Um, it's, a, it's just Arrow, you know. So they're beautifully reproduced. You've got the extras. You've got everything else. And yeah. It, it, just lovingly re-restored I, I, st I started to watch um, House 2 because I remember House from back in the 80s and loved it and I bought the DVD a few years back before Arrow took it on and restored it beautifully I bought a shitty old DVD <laughs> off of Amazon it's bollocks um, I thought well I've never seen the second one I put on the second one and it's terrible <laughs> it's it's like a really bad kids movie. It's not a horror film at all. Um, Bill Maher is in there as the greasiest record exec you've ever seen. Um, and I, yeah, I didn't make it to the end. I've got to finish it. But there's also a documentary on Arrow about the making of House 2. And I get the impression it's probably one of those where the making of is way more entertaining than the film at the end. Bit like um, Troll 2, which apparently is a legendary documentary. Because again, that's one of the worst films ever made. So, but there, I didn't even know there's House Two, Three, and Four, maybe even Five. Not sure. What? So, I'm gonna have to watch all of those now. <laughs> it's gotta be done. 
never know. There might be a good one in there. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bo from LegionPodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events, and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. Um, yeah, so VFW was officially the last film at Fright Fest Glasgow, because then they put on Anderson Falls after that, and because they'd got a print of it during the day and said, right, we'll play it at the end. I got halfway through it and I thought, okay, there is nothing happening in this film that doesn't happen in your average episode of NCIS. Um, so I'm going to leave now because my flight is at seven o'clock Sunday morning <laughs> and it's now one in the morning. So I, I've it, it's not won me enough to keep me in this seat. And, uh, you know, I, I queried with <laughs> Gordon. I said, did it, you know, was there some dramatic twist that I missed that made it an amazing film by the end? He said, nope. <laughs> so, turns out I made the right decision. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that was Fright Fest Glasgow. Uh, what I realised later, well, Lavinia is very good at helping me realise these things. is <laughs> after the flights, the hotel, <laughs> the food, the taxi rides to and from the, <laughs> the thing, the parking at the airport, this end. She said, you do realise you just paid 56 quid per movie to see all of those. Ooh. <laughs> and I walked out halfway through one of them. <laughs> Shit. Oh, oh, that no. no. Never tell me the stats. <laughs> <laughs> not, for a, not for Glasgow Fright Fest. No, 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 no. no, no, no. But it, it's getting to see everyone. It's being yeah. in that room. You can't put a price on that. And I say it every time. It's family it's and if people don't realize this and they think i'm completely insane doing this two three times a year go on amazon prime it is on there i don't think you even need a prime subscription and there is a documentary called fright fest the dark heart of cinema watch it okay and many of the people who i go there to see are talking heads on that documentary and you'll see why i love it so much yeah um, unfortunately, Gogsy didn't make the cut because they were there. There are shots in that documentary from the year I know Gogsy was there, but oh, I couldn't. Really? I couldn't spot you. Um, the back of my head is in it for two seconds, I believe. So we 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 both escaped camera, <laughs> but uh, it's definitely worth a watch. Shockingly not available be... in your region. Oh jeez. Yeah, I think I looked for it before and it wasn't in mine, but I need to look again. Unbelievable. I mean, I guess it's a very British thing. I kind of get it. It's a little bit of magic that you just can't say what it is. A lot of sort of five days in the year, we're going to sit in the cinema and continually watch films and then socialise in the way we, we do. And you go, you go out, you have your drinks and don't sleep much and come again and you're bleary eyed but you're excited because it's another fun day of, of horror films. People enjoy the communal experience of being together and coming out the other side and say, did you just see what I just saw? I just find this isn't pretentious. People are here the same wavelength from different backgrounds. That's what I like. Everybody's from different backgrounds. You can see somebody walking down the street who you wouldn't see in a million years. They've got the red lanyard on. You know they're a Fright Fester. There's that instant camaraderie there. 
someone that maybe didn't have that, that connection. They've, they've grown up with films, be it just specifically horror films or just cinema as a whole. Um, they've grown up loving it, but they've never really had that, uh, that friend group or, or person to connect with. And uh, when you come to Fright Fest, suddenly you're immersed with all the other freaks of your kind. But you think it's going to be all about the organisers and the celebrities and the arranging of the events. And yeah, there's a fair amount of that, but it focuses more on why people spend five days on a bank holiday weekend in summer sitting in a cinema. Because people think I'm insane. And it's like, well, there you go. That's why. Um, Fingers crossed it happens this year. Don't know what we're going to do if it doesn't. Actually, I do. Because (laughs) last Saturday... There's somebody discovered this app, um, which I suppose is like Zoom that we're using now. It's called House Party. Show you one. But basically, when when somebody logs in, it just says, so and so is in the house. And we had about, I don't know, 10 of us from Fright Fest all in this, like, and it shares the screen around. And we were doing bad horror trivia questions from a bad trivia game, but three different people in the chat actually owned the games and knew most of the answers. Um, and it just descended into people showing horror characters and pets. And I don't know, it was, it, we, I think we were online for three hours just talking <laughs> bollocks. And like, that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we are. Uh, who wants to go next? <laughs> Does Timo have anything? Sure. I, I'm going to bring this up because... You'll, because uh, oh. <laughs> Boswell will appreciate this. You know how, well, Coxie too, you know how I don't really react to a lot of stuff? Except yeah. that one movie that we're never mentioning again. <laughs> uh, apparently, this whole, the way the world is now and what's been going on, because I've been home for the past, what, a month now? Yeah. Yeah, 12 was the first day that I was mm. at home. So I've been home a month now. And I started re-listening to uh, Infected by Scott Sigler. And it turns out body horror is affecting me differently now. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Weird that. For the first time, just listening to it, and because I've listened to it, I want to say four times before this so this is probably oh, really? yeah this is probably wow. my fifth time around such a good book yeah and uh only now because i was just was it yesterday or the day before scary perry was digging into his arm i think or leg with a mm. fork yeah and him describing that twing that you hear when he hit a nerve <laughs> i was like <laughs> for the first time I, I could actually feel it so now I kind of get what you mean when you when body horror comes up and it's not pleasant it's but. funny you're the opposite way around to me because I listened to Infected and it had such an effect on me the first time I found those bits so well described yeah. so difficult to listen to so hard to imagine and then I went for a re-listen and it didn't have the same impact and I was a little bit disappointed. I was just like, oh, I suppose you can only have that once. So it's <laughs> weird to hear it the other way around, actually. Yeah. I think I've only listened to it once. I guess I'm it's just simple. more starved. I'm starved <laughs> for more, like, any kind of entertainment. And when I'm listening to something, apparently I'm really listening to it now instead of just sort of listening to it. But I'm focusing on it, I guess, more. Have you done the Red Rising series yet? Red Rising. I got about three books in, I think. Really? Uh, what, and stopped? Yeah. I haven't oh. listened to the last one, I think. How many are there? Hmm. I think I've listened to two. I think there's four. You've got Red Is Rising, uh, Golden Sun, uh, is that the second one? Golden Sun, Iron something, Iron Star, I think is the last one. Then there's Iron oh, Gold. Got a credit available. And then the last one is Medieval something or other. I can't remember. Uh, I think it's five in total now. Oh, I actually have more horror books. <laughs> I just realized I've been listening to horror stuff. Oh, now he realizes. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's it's been a month, dude. Give me a break. <laughs> It's just us all staring at our audible lists now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, Red Rising and Golden Sun, that's the only two that I've listened to. Yeah, because so if, if you get to the end of Golden Sun, there's no way you don't go on to the next one. Morningstar is the last, is the last in the first trilogy. Because at the end of Golden it, Sun, you're like, motherfucker, you can't stop it there. Like, you want to rush straight into the next book. And the most recent one is Dark Age, um, which is superb. It's really well written. Love that book. Um, but that's sci-fi, not horror. <laughs> I just don't like the narrator. <sighs> that's a shame. Yeah, that does. I mean, that does have an impact. Um, the weirdly with me is I really struggle to find narrated horror books that I like. Um, every, pretty much every horror, if it's an anthology, anything I download, just doesn't land with me. Yeah. I, like, Infected is probably the last horror book that really got to me. Um, and I just find it really limiting now uh, Stephen King stuff I've, there's quite a few titles on there do you like Phalanx did you listen to I really to liked it? Phalanx yeah yeah, yeah. see horror books <laughs> is it horror I, I guess I mean it's aliens I mean if you're not aware of this ladies and gentlemen Scott Sigler uh, wrote a short story for a compendium uh, commissioned by Jonathan Mabry called Bug Hunt which was a short story set in the aliens universe and he wrote the first story, which is from the alien's perspective, um, as in what they may be thinking or doing when attacking humans, which is quite brave, really. Off the back of that, he got a book deal, uh, which is canon. It's Fox ratified, blah, blah, blah. And it's called Aliens Phalanx, and it came out a couple of months back. Um, I don't read franchise novel fiction as a rule, so I can't compare it to other books that are out there. But the last Audible presentation that came out was Out of the Shadows, I think it was called, which is basically the conceit was somebody interrupted. Is it the Nostromo that Ripley's on in cryostasis before she's discovered at the beginning of Aliens? Yes. Yeah. It's still the Nostromo, isn't no. it? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, well, it's, no, it's the, it's it's the, the shuttle. shuttle from, yeah. yeah. So she, somebody oh. intercepts the shuttle, um, unfreezes her, Takes her to a place where there is an alien. Right, I, I, I she kills, to it. Um, Sorry, this is spoilers. Sorry, if you got that book and you haven't listened to it, turn it off. But seriously, this is all there is to it. They run around the ship a lot. Some people die. They go back to the ship. Her memories are raised. She's put back in cryostasis, and then aliens happens. I'm, I'm like, what? sorry, that's a shit idea. Yeah, and it's not very good. And it was fully dramatized, I think, as well. The production, and I just it, nah, couldn't care less. Um. Scott Sigler's Phalanx is it's a slow burn and I know some people who bought it and turned it off before they got to the good stuff um, because it's a lot of world building it does ramp up but it's a really interesting idea it's something that's not been done it takes the aliens into different territory with different enemies with different setup different motivations um, and you just don't quite know how he's going to deal with certain things at certain points and I the end of it really got me. I was well invested and I could not turn it off. And that's what I want from a book. And yeah. it so rarely happens these days. So. I kind of would like, I listened to, no, I just put the thingy away. Uh, it was the Threshold series by Peter Kleins, which is narrated by Ray Porter. So that helps always. Oh, I like Ray. Right, yeah, Ray. Porter. <laughs> yeah. I actually found that series by just looking at what Ray Porter has done and just, oh, that sounds ah, good. Okay. That's a good a good way to find good books. Just look mm. at Ray Porter, uh, okay. and uh, it's a, it's a trilogy, I think, or a trilogy. It's basically just they. It starts with this weird building in I want to say L.A. or somewhere in San Francisco, and there's just like a hundred year old machine in the basement that nobody knows what it does. It's just it's a thing. A machine that goes bing. <laughs> It's basically just gauges that are set at zero. And throughout the whole trilogy and all that, it's discovered, spoilers, I guess, that the point of the machine is to keep the gauges at zero. Because if they don't, if they go into negative or positive too much, uh, sort of interdimensional rupture happens and eldritch horror creatures come out, eat the oh, world. Cool. And it goes on to like different universes and stuff where they go to universe hopping basically and find 
universes that have already been eaten or are in the process of being eaten by Eldritch Horror thingies. And it's it's kind of interesting. It's It kind of yeah. falls apart in one of the books. Because, yeah, it's, I think it's four books, except one is set like a hundred years in the future, which makes a weird jump because that's the third book in the four book series. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it lost me there a bit, but kind of recommend it anyway. And especially okay. Ray Porter is always good. Yeah, so, he is. Going yeah. right. He's awesome. Mm. So, Gogzy, do you... That's me. I'll <laughs> me. Um, the only movie, well, the only one I can remember is the one that I just finished watching. Uh, yesterday? Or was it Friday? Who knows what matter. day it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a blur now. Oh, sorry. Um, Clang. That's all right. Wolf Clang. Um, <laughs> is the, um, I think it's... Visual Spanish. gag there. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> is it Spanish? I don't know. Yes, it is. Oh, it's Basque, I believe. Yep, it's Slytherin. Uh, <laughs> definitely not Spanish, put it that way. Okay. Sorry if I have offended anybody, but you know it's me. Um I, the platform, which is on Netflix and has been in the top ten or my top ten, I don't know if it's if the top ten changes hmm. or if it even's over in the UK or whatever, but there's Netflix have started doing this top ten in the America type thing. So Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's region if it's regional. It is you'll have that one. As a team, I will have that one. It's one of those whys. Because if it's Netflix producers, yeah, it's a, they tend to put it out everywhere. Yeah. Netflix, Netflix originals usually show up everywhere, except when yeah. it's MST3K. Oh. <laughs> Bizarre. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, for people that don't know, it's a vertical prison with one cell per level, two people per, two people per cell, only one food platform, and two minutes per day to feed from up to down and this nightmare trapped in the hole so yeah so the people at the top level get the first go at the food the people at what may be the bottom level um, which is I guess it's not really a spoiler if you say it's over 200 um, get whatever's left so um, it's kind of puts you in the or me because I'm weird that way into the way of thinking oh god what would I do if I was in there could you eat after someone else has eaten? Could you, you know, live like that? Would you kill the person that you're with? Um, and it has a very interesting concept. You're allowed to take one thing in with you. It can be anything you want, but one thing. So, a machete. Well, this guy takes in a book, but yeah, someone <laughs> to find out later on has someone's a dog and a knife and a samurai sword and those kind of. Oh, things. okay, so, yeah. similar thinking. Um, it's a it's very well done. It's very creepy. Um, it's there are a few really gross bits in it. Um, there is a well, this would be a spoiler. Should it? Uh, there's a very upsetting bit that certain people will be really upset by. Uh, so that would be you, Boz. So you can okay. Well, I, yeah. So I'm said, not. I'm not exactly watching it now either. Now. So <laughs> we're done. <laughs> I think we're done with this one. <laughs> Three words. I am legend. Fuck you. <laughs> Exactly. So yes, it's that was a bit like, no. Um, was a bit harsh, but you could tell it was fake anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, that helps. Yes, so it, it did kind of stand out. But yeah, it's really. I had to watch it over three settings just because I was lying in bed, and it's not really something I wanted to watch just before I went to sleep. Um, it was very nightmarish um, because the way the setup is, it never really explains it fully. Um, and I just found online that the ending is explained better, so I need to look at how that is. But That's never a good sign. You, I think it's one of those. I mean, I'm sure Duncan's probably could do a nine-hour podcast and all the intricacies of it and all the, you know, <laughs> he probably already sub, has. Sub 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 sub. sub <laughs> you probably did it six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Episode one of ten that week. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say that because he's so busy making podcasts, he doesn't listen to anyone else's where they slag him off. <laughs> Imagine him being in quarantine. That would be the most. Yeah, he could record forty hours in a day. Um, but I will tell him to his face. I said that. No. <laughs> um, 
so yeah, so you can, it never explains how long you're in there for, I think it varies by person, um, if you make it all the way through you're rewarded with something, and I guess it's some sort of apocalyptic time outside or whatever, and the one month you can wake up and you're going to be in platform 8, one month you wake up and you're in platform 250, or you'll be in platform 109, or whatever, so it's just very weird and there's this big hole that goes all the way down the middle so the platform's what the food's on um, so you can see people above you and see people down you, below you uh-huh. uh, it's very interesting I'd say give it a watch um, maybe not when you're eating food or um, anything <laughs> yeah. like that but it's, it's I planned to watch it before style. we did this but yeah, yeah. Mm. Just the, it's very stylistic the way it's done um and then it's really weird as to how the platform actually moves. So I'm sure there's a, another reason behind that, but I've never quite understood how the platform goes up and down. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it'll make you think. That's for sure. I, I just well, I, rem- I just watched yesterday a uh, movie Bob's review of the platform. It was uh-huh. not favorable. He, really? he he did not enjoy that movie. See, I don't watch any of that stuff before yeah. I watch a movie. I will never watch a review thing of a movie before. I, like, the way we do it, we skirt around it, we don't really say anything. If someone does an in-depth review, it's just like, no, i got to make my own mind up first. Because yeah. you're just going to spoil it for me. I don't and watch... A lot of these people who do these YouTube shows reviewing movies, um, I'm sorry, they just spend far too long analysing the movie rather than just trying to enjoy it. So then I... I I think a lot of them will falsely ruin the experience for others that they might have enjoyed otherwise. Yeah. So I'm very I, funny about that. I never watch movie Bob's reviews if I want to see the movie first. Like I have <laughs> I have his right. hunt episode and one other episode like in the queue because I'm I just skip them because I want to watch them later when I've seen the movie, but I don't want to watch the review before I see the movie because I know I want to see the movie. Yeah. But he he's he's very good. He's very very good. But you know, still, I agree with you. I don't want to watch watch a review if I want to see the movie. I think I, I kind of like it's kind of ironic sitting here doing a podcast thing about movies, which is kind of what we do. It's um, a meta thing, and, <laughs> and, and then saying that I don't like this prevalence of over analytical things about movies, that, and, and I won't watch or listen to them. But, yeah, but uh, like, I, I have to... We're not on YouTube, so it's fine. We're just three white guys <laughs> having a pod, have a podcast So because we're unique and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have things to say, so I'll have a podcast. <laughs> Christ. Hey, look. We were doing it before, so many, that doesn't make any difference. Um, no. <laughs> so... <laughs> And only two of us have beards, so. <laughs> I mean, it's actually we've reached the comedy. We've re- reached the comedy point of where we can no longer say veteran podcasters because all that means is we've strung out our podcasting career so effectively by doing two fucking shows a year over a ten-year period. That does not make me veteran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's prolific and there's veteran. There's two two different yeah. words. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like going to the gym. I go to the gym three times a week every two years or so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are certain reviewers I just I can't give the time of day anymore. It, 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 and it's because they they are constantly negative. Like if I listen yeah. to someone who reviews stuff, um, I hate blowing smoke up his ass, but I have to do it again. Duncan McLeish podcast under the stairs. Ooh. There's no bullshit there. If he. <laughs> If he likes a movie, he will praise it appropriately. He will point to the problems, but and he's more often positive than he is negative. And as such, I'm happy to listen to that. And uh, I like to think that we're often the same. <laughs> oh, what's <laughs> like if the I most... deal on a movie? It's normally pretty bad. What is that film joy YouTube series called with Mikey Newman? No, uh, I, I don't. I don't really. Christ. I try not to go down the YouTube rabbit holes. I didn't have time to watch the films in the first place, let alone watch people talking about the films I haven't seen. I can't remember what it's <laughs> called, but the whole premise of the of the show is this: Mikey Newman and three other people, and they watch movies that are bad, that are generally considered bad movies, and their whole point is to find something good to say about them. 
Yeah. And it's wonderful to watch four actually like talented and smart people who work in the industry finding good things to say about whatever the ghosts on ghosts of Mars or ghosts on Mars or whatever that one was. And them actually finding some good things about those movies that are just not great. <laughs> and that's the kind of content I like. And I'm, I, I agree with you that this whole, like, because a lot of people are really negative about things. Cause, and it's almost like they're negative to make themselves look better. And it's like, well, you go out and make a movie. See yeah. how difficult it is. And that's Jeez. how you get clicks. This is well, why This yeah, is exactly. why The Last Jedi sucks. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you like that kind of thing, if you haven't listened already, I recommend Strong Language and Violent Scenes as well, um, which is my mate Mitch from Fright Fest and Andy Stewart, also from Fright Fest occasionally. And uh, <laughs> sorry. If you can bump into it, it must be a very specific time. Um, but they're really good, and they, they have um, a lot of the directors and stuff of the films that play at Fright Fest and so on. There's quite a... They're quite in that circle, so they get a lot of them on. So they've had like Graham Skipper on and Matt Mercer and people like that, um, and Tristan Risk, and yeah. So you get some really good shows, but the pre- they don't get on the directors and then blow smoke up their ass about their film they've made. Maybe a little bit at the end, but they barely even mention it. They bring them on and they say, "Right, bring on a film that need- you're going to defend that might not deserve it." Um, so the one turn I got on the show was I brought Jason X to the table. Um, which was a lot of fun um, and then like Paddy Murphy as well who was on our show the last show we put out I believe sometime <laughs> last year he also brought a Jason movie to that podcast but again it's it's trying to find the positive in some really shonky movies and they do they go some interesting places with it um, yeah so uh, give them a listen as well this is just me promoting everybody else but whatever <laughs> Because there's not enough content from us, you'll get one show from us, and I'll tell you who else to go and listen to to fill the gaps between the next one we record. Exactly. Yeah. Uh. So I I did a rewatch, um, completely unplanned, off the cuff, because I did this Arrow subscription. I went down, and there's one Gaspar Noé film. Yeah, there's one Gaspar Noé film on there, and I thought I should have seen that. I know the gruesome difficult parts of it but I thought I was thinking back and I thought do you know what I didn't watch it properly I, I think I either stopped and started or I skipped I'm, I'm not entirely sure why but I thought this actually deserves a rewatch especially after seeing Climax and seeing where his career has gone he's a very Marmite director he he sort of loves it when people hate his movies so I sort of watched it with that frame of mind <clears throat> And uh, I might have been half cut as well. So it's was, it was an interesting sort of relaxed late at night experience. One of those where Lavinia's asleep behind me and I'm like, I know for a fact she is going to wake up in the middle of the protracted rape scene in the middle of this movie because that's always what happens. And I'm just going to have to say, <laughs> bad timing, go the fuck to sleep. Um, yes. So I watched Irreversible again from uh, finish to start. And... Uh, I watched it properly, like as if I was at Fright Fest, like I was if I was trapped in the cinema. I did not look away. I did not flinch. I did not pause. I did not go to the toilet. Nothing. I didn't even eat anything. I didn't look at my phone. I gave it my full attention for the entire duration of the film. Fuck me, that was a hard watch still. Um, but I can't overlook how powerful it is as a film. And the most controversial film, the thing about that film, is that I think it's 12-minute rape scene with Monica Bellucci in a subway. Um, 12 minutes! And, yeah, and a lot of people are very critical of him for that, and it seems lascivious, it seems like, it seems self-indulgent as a director to, to do that, and you're thinking, is he just, what's his motivation? I mean, I don't know, but what I can tell you is watching it from <laughs> in the order the film is, and trying to imagine what you do when you're watching Irreversible is you try and imagine it in the correct order. Mm-hmm. And if what you've already seen, this is the setup for what you've already seen happen in the climax at the end, you have to understand what would create such an act of violence at the end. Now, they weren't witness to this. They saw the aftermath of what happened to this girl. If they'd been witness to it, oh, they'd have done so much worse. And I'm watching it and I'm like, I am so uncomfortable in my own skin 
that I haven't fast forwarded this, that I haven't looked away, that I've forced myself to sit and watch through it as if I was in a screening. The length of it <laughs> is kind of important to how shitty it makes you feel. And that's the power in that movie. Because you are hating yourself every second you're watching it. Because it's so well performed and so unflinching. And I mean, she must have, like, the pain she must have been in just acting in that scene. Like, like so you even if you're putting it in terms of this isn't real, it's an actress and an actor and, you know, they're having to do this thing. And you're like, damn, that's horrible even from that perspective. Even pretending to do this and to maintain that level of emotion and to portray it on screen because it's her reaction to what's happening that breaks your heart. And I don't know. I'm like, would I shorten it? You could shorten it. And it would still have the impact because no one wants to see that. But it's like the end of Martyrs, the the punishing beatings that just when you think you've had enough and you can't handle any more, they just show you more and more and more. It it's sort of if you watch if you watch horror films to get that kind yeah. Appropriate. <laughs> Timo moves a camera to him stroking a cat while I'm talking about this. Is that like, one way to break it, the intensity? Emotional support <laughs> animal. <laughs> yes. Oh, he look, he's coming right up to the camera. Oh, bless him, hello. Oh, that's um, that's we got kisses. That, that's broken entirely. What I was trying to say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> bless him. Um. So yeah. So I guess my point is is yes, it's looking at it from outside and being reported by reviewers and so on yes that seems far too long for that scene when you put yourself through it if you're used to that kind of movie and you watch that kind of movie to make you feel horrible to understand the human condition a bit more it's kind of important that you don't look away and that it is that long um that's a really tough thing to say i appreciate but it's how i felt at the end and when i walk away from a film feeling that horrible when the film ends in a beautiful green park with a blue sky and tweeting birds and i'm like fuck that was horrible that's a really interesting and clever thing to do with the film so <laughs> i'd be interested in what other people think and i you know feel free to lambast me online if i'm completely wrong um but it was yeah it was quite an experience and i kind of wish i'd watched it that way the first time um, I still get pissed off with the swirly cameras and Gaspar's shooting style. I get that that's his thing. I was very glad in Climax he pulled away from that and didn't do it so much. Uh, into the Void he went completely to the next level and was over the top with it. Um, but yeah, Irreversible's kind of gone up a little bit in my what I think of it as a film. Um, and certainly the violence at the beginning of the film is still absolutely superbly done. And again, just makes you feel horrible. Um, it's just one of those flicks. I had horror com- fans. I had completely <laughs> forgotten about that movie. I've never seen it. I remember the cover because I. Mm. When did it come out? Ages ago. Early two thousands, I think. Yeah, because I, I think I still worked at the video store, so I remember uh, the cover. I remember the VHS cover <laughs> <laughs> of it, and I never watched it. And from what you t- just said, I'm never going to watch it. No, if you hated Martyrs yeah. and how that made you feel, this will do yeah. the same, but it'll it'll start you off there and then dial it back a bit and then take you right back up there and then dial it right back off. Yeah, um, no. It's really interesting concept. Because <laughs> he's shaking his head as well. No, nope, no. Nope. It's one that I don't think I'm ever going to be in the mood to go, you know what, I'm just going to pop on Irreversible and sit back and have a beer. I didn't think I would be. It was It was really just, it was a happenstance sort of thing. Like, now is the yeah. time, it's quiet, It's I, I can give it my full attention. You have to. Just put on porn like a normal human being. <laughs> Couldn't be more. <laughs> Couldn't be more inappropriate a statement, honestly. <laughs> You were the one who kept using the word climax. <laughs> the climax is not the rape scene. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, that's in the middle of the movie, just so you know. Right. A mid-climax scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I deal with Spoilers. difficult matters with humor. Sp- 
spoilers, just so you know, the climax of that movie is the second or third scene of the movie where a guy gets his head caved in with a fire extinguisher. And see, see, that's fine. Yeah, I have no problem that, with that. <laughs> when that was done at the time, no one had really... Like, we see it a lot in movies now. It has been done and done and done because it became a thing. And the, yeah. the graphics and the techniques got better and better and better. This is pretty much... It, it's as practical looking as it possibly could be. There's got to be some camera trickery and i don't know cg i don't know how they did it um but at the time no one had really seen that done in that like the camera just there the whole time in that graphic away and people were sick they they either left the cinema or they felt physically sick or they were just repulsed by it um and that's where it got its reputation really then add to that the scene in the middle which i was talking about um yeah it, it's controversial filmmaking at its utmost and it's only for I would say the hardened horror fan who like I say has that kind of weird thing where we just want to be made to feel horrible about things occasionally um, and like I guess right now I don't want to like a lot of people are watching Contagion and Pandemic and they're watching all these films about the shit the world is going through right now that's kind of the last thing I want to do so I think perhaps my brain space was Make me feel like shit, but take it so far away from this current situation and just, yeah, let's see if it can be done again. Because since Martyrs, I go to festivals and I'm always looking for that next film that does that to me. It's a weird, it's almost masochistic, I don't know, but it, it's kind of what extreme horror fans are always looking for the next thing. Um, and it's such a weird thing because you feel like shit and the film stays with you for days and you think about it for days, but part of it is just making you realize you're alive and you function as a human and i don't know i it's it's, it's a subject we try and unpick over and over again and i don't think we ever get to the bottom of it uh no <laughs> it's, it's a weird one for horror fans and it's i don't think it's a feeling you're ever going to describe no properly um but it's it's one of the ones that like say if you put it on in front of me and I had no choice but to watch it, mm. then, okay, that's probably the only way um, I'm going to sit down and, and watch it. Yeah. Because, let's see, I don't think I'll ever get myself in the proper mind set to switch on on Netflix or be able to focus properly at home mm. um, and watch such a thing. But if it came on and I was in the middle of a film festival or something and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is the, the time and the space to watch it. Um, but... It's also a super difficult balance to strike because a lot of people try to do that and fail. So for me, a Serbian film, he was trying to do exactly that and failed absolutely because he made me feel that way. But at the end of the movie, I was angry at the movie for its content to because it was too yeah. intentional and too blatant that you tried to make me feel that way. Martyrs and the Reversible kind of pull it off because there's more to it than that. <laughs> it's really hard to describe why toe tag pictures people who make films like that where it's just torture for the sake of torture that will make me feel like shit and like I don't want to watch it but then I will switch it off because I'm like what's the point the, yeah. you're not telling a story there's no narrative there's no character there's no like the emotional journey those guys go on there's a lot of screaming and shouting at people in alleyways and stuff like that in the in interstitial scenes and stuff like that um but the performances throughout Irreversible are absolutely spot on and they carry the emotion at every point. And in fact, the leading man, his name I can't remember, he's currently in the next series of Westworld. So he, he's done all right out of it, you know? <laughs> I put it on, I went, yeah. she is him. It's, it's the French Martin Kemp bloke because he looks just like him. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so those films are very few and very far between, and I've watched a lot of films like that trying to get the same thing. There was one, I think it's called Trauma, that they played at the Soho Horror Festival two years ago, and it was a hard get. It was the one where the guy just walked in off the street and sat down because he didn't know what the hell was going on, and then walked out in disgust ten minutes later because he saw the most disgusting thing on screen he's probably seen in his entire life. Bad timing, dude. Um, that was an okay film, but again, they didn't get the character arcs, and they didn't get the point across it just it was the points that were extreme were extreme for extreme sake a lot of it yeah um that might be controversial because i know people like that movie but it didn't stay with me because the characters didn't their emotional journey didn't 
end with me at the end of the movie and carry on into yeah. the next few days. It was almost instantly forgettable, and all I remembered was the gross scenes. Serbian yeah. film, I kind of only remember the gross scenes because I didn't get the narrative, and, and I think that's so yeah. important. And the, the people who make extreme horror, when they get it right, I will praise them till the end of the earth because it's such a hard balance to strike, and I'm always looking for that next one. So... That was heavy. That's why Tim was wrong when it comes to martyrs. Yes, so. completely. He was so angry. He was so angry. Still makes me laugh to this day. He didn't talk to me for like an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's part to uh, say I fucking hate you or something like that. I don't know. I, can't remember. <laughs> I just remember getting up and just going out for a smoke. I just, I want to be, I want to be, in, I want to be quiet right now. <laughs> And go, coming back in, sitting on a couch, because I was there. I was at your place. You were. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly ended the friendship. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm, guys, I'm, I'm still going to be here two days. So, yay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we put a comedy on straight afterwards. Yeah, we Make must. Make laugh, for God's sake. Yeah, put we the must have, show on. <laughs> we must have put something on. It's like, God <laughs> damn it. Uh. <laughs> uh, so there you go. That's how we end mm. up with a... I don't know what it is about that movie, though. I still don't know why. It's why it made you feel that way. Yeah, it's because it was unrelenting. That it, and when you think you'd had enough, it gave you the bit you weren't expecting and was worse than anything you'd seen yet. And then made you keep watching it and keep watching it and keep watching it. I don't know. I don't think that's it. It's the. I still think it's the dehumanization of the person that really gets me. The way they did it, and I don't, I can't put my finger on what it is because watching anything else like Saw or uh, Hostel or whatever, where they just treat people as meat, basically, mm. that's fine. But what is it about martyrs that just does it? I don't know. You know what it is? Oh. Sorry, Gogs, you go. No, I was going to say, what, for me, it's like when you look at Hostel and Saw, you're only there for like five minutes for that person if that mm. and you've got cut scenes and you're always moving away whereas you've got the camera just sitting there time after time after time on this girl and you just watching her get pounding after pounding after pounding and it's like you're not turned yeah <laughs> freezing <laughs> this is why I love video <laughs> punch after punch after punch um, and I think that's what it is. Is it's not mm. turning away from you. It's not the camera's not moving. It's not anything. You hear the sound of those ladders and you go, "Oh fuck!" fuck. Yeah. But I think that where it because now I've seen it a few times, which Timo hasn't put himself through yet. Where it gets to me, what do you mean most, yet? Where, <laughs> <laughs> there are handcuffs involved. Um, there, <laughs> Ooh. And those eye things from a chocolate orange. Chocolate orange. <laughs> chocolate no, orange. It. <laughs> it's just, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Clockwork orange, you know what I mean. Oh. <laughs> That's another movie I hate, by the way. Clockwork, Clockwork Orange. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not yeah. a fan. Yeah. What well, doesn't help the first time I ever saw Clockwork Orange because it was banned. Um, obviously, I got the VHS off of Mark the Bastard, as I did everything else, as we well know. So I take the VHS home, I put it in, and I start watching it, and he's there with his eyes pinned open, watching all these horrible things on screen. And then there's a short, like, 30-minute film. And then I realise, oh, we haven't rewound the tape, and I just started the movie halfway through. <laughs> Fucking ruined it for myself. <laughs> so I had to rewind it and watch it again, and it just never had the same effect. So my first watching was a disaster. Uh... What was the thing about martyrs? Yes. <clears throat> so the thing about martyrs is the bit that gets to me is the guy, the people doing to her what they're doing to her at the end of the movie. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. Sorry. They they genuinely care for her. That's what's unbelievable. What? Yeah. They they see her as their kind of savior. That she's doing something amazing for mankind. She's a sacrificial lamb, whether she chose it or not. So none of the beatings or the abuse or any, none of it comes from a place of hate. It's purely mechanical. 
it's purely a pro it's a, a it's it a right be a robot it's a yeah. religious right it, she has to go through it they might not like that they do it but they're so bought into this faith thing that they're in that they will do it for the good of the many versus the good of her down there so they care for her they love her but they're treating her like shit and that is so fucked up that is so fucked up and that's what really gets to me mm. by the end of that film and a lot of people hate the ending and I think it's perfect it's, it's the perfect ending because <laughs> it's kind of funny in the sickest way ever but um, oh you mean because of the old French did yeah yeah <laughs> it's just the last thing that happens. Yes. Because you don't get a payoff. You do not get a payoff. In yeah. fact, Irreversible is exactly the same in that respect. Um, and you don't realise it until way later in the film, which is genius. Um, man, I'm There's praising no that film more than I thought. That would make that work, though. I don't think... I don't think there's any way you could have ended it that would have, that would have satisfied... <laughs> What she went what through. No. Went through. Mm. You know what I mean? No, I mean, would, the only thing would have been her delivering her own justice, but then that just becomes a trite Hollywood movie, which is exactly yes. what he's not making. Yeah, or, so or it's spinning it to uh, Monty Python's Galaxy song. Explain. I don't even remember that song. It's the, it's the one from uh, Meaning, of, Meaning Life. of Life. Yeah, mm. yeah, where they just describe how everything is. Because that's what they're basically looking for God. So I guess just hard left turn into absurd, absurd comedy, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I clearly need to watch that again. I don't remember it at all. I don't think I've ever seen it all the way through. Mm. And yet um, you've seen Martyrs more than once. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it three times, I think. Yeah, you could have watched at least three times. <laughs> The meaning of life before you did that. I mean, get your priorities straight, guys. I, I really need to, yeah. <clears throat> but he saw it in the in the toughest of circumstances, which is um, <laughs> in a cinema, not knowing what you're going to get and just being forced to sit through it. That, that's the hardest. That's what I love about Fright Fest. You get hijacked by films. <laughs> mm. Yes. Let's say so if Universal came on, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're stuck there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you're up for whatever then. We should say stuck there. You do have a choice to get up and leave. <laughs> Some do. Some do. Yes. I've only done that to a few. So, uh, after saying, like, I wasn't going to talk about the current situation and things like that, I then saw a film which looked interesting. Uh, I think might have been on Shudder, this one. Uh, what We Become. Yes, I have it in my queue. Hmm. So starts with a sixty seconds of it. <laughs> starts with an infection. Everyone being locked in at home. The house gets tarped like in wreck. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, this is really near the knuckle. Um, <laughs> fact, you're gonna watch it and you haven't yet. I've got to be careful what I say. Um, it's it's clearly good production, low budget, minimal resources, but comes across with all the panache of something with a bigger budget. That's my guess anyway um there's some pretty dumb things that people do but then isn't that always the way in a crisis situation kind of thing um th there's a big saggy bit in the middle but towards the end you kind of get some of the stuff you were hoping and the ending uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Let's talk about it next time. You don't really it. It's really hard to know what to say because I know you're going to watch it and I don't want to spoil it. Um, okay. Just use the Jeremy, Jeremy Renner's line when he was doing press tour for, I want to say, Endgame. Because hmm. uh, everybody was trying to get spoilers out of everybody, every one of the cast. So Jeremy Renner's answer to every question about them trying to probe for uh, spoilers was... The movie begins, and then it ends. <laughs> and then he just sit back and look, wait, wait for the next question. <laughs> That's a very him response. Yeah, take that yeah. response. Um, is it worth watching? Yes. Okay. Um, does it do anything particularly new? 
Not really. <laughs> so there's nothing wrong with that, though. No, if it's worth a watch. Yeah, I think so. And it is very of now, which I thought I wasn't up for. And then when I saw him going through it, I was sort of starting to think, oh, yeah, that would suck. We're so much better off. (laughs) So, like, if you want to feel better about your lockdown situation, maybe watch that one and see how bad it could get. (laughs) But that's all I'm going to say about that one. The new campaign slogan. (laughs) Yeah. Shit could be worse. (laughs) <coughs> oh, Trump 2020. Yet. It could be worse. <laughs> yeah. But you see, that's my that's, that's my thinking on where this goes now. Good you see, so. <laughs> Sorry, Cogsy. It's funny for you two fuckers. You're not to live through this shit. It affects us as well. You see, what's going to happen is he's going to decide that, you know, it's taking too long to come up with a vaccine. So they're going to get a couple of these other things he's been talking about and they're going to like genetically smush them together, rush them out to try and treat people. That's going to cause the zombie mutations. Then you're going to have the zombie apocalypse and we'll get the fallout from that. But it's okay because your borders are already closed. So we might be safe and we'll just watch America be destroyed. Yeah, it's going to be 28 days later, except US. Yeah, Yeah. pretty much. Exactly. I still find it, because I watched it, I watched 28 Days Later, it wasn't longer, a couple of months ago, I think, another horror film I watched again, Ah. Ah. and I watched watched the sequel as well, which I I don't think I'd ever seen before. 28 weeks. Yeah. They're talking about 28 months later, like, well, if we weren't sick of sort of pandemic apocalypse movies, God, do you think how many we're going to have in the next three years? (laughs) Yeah, they're going to, yeah. (sighs) Anyway, Netflix is going to be full of them. It still it still weirds me out the ending of Twenty Eight Days Later when remember the ending when the it's the uh, jet fighter flying across the countryside yep. and it's a finished pilot, which I find extreme, extremely weird. Is it? Yeah, he's speaking Finnish into the radio, communicating back oh. that he's found survivors and stuff. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, yes, I don't. I, I have no this... idea why. <laughs> Yeah, but they had a friend online talking about infection figures and stuff like this and like graphs and whatever. <clears throat> and I said, yes, just remember that this is this is deaths like overall, not in ratio per population. And the reason mm. Finland's is so low is because twelve people live there. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty five, easy to lock five and down. a half million of us. <laughs> well, we've locked down a third of the country, so well, third of the population <laughs> and ten percent of the country is locked down currently. Where I live now. Where a third of the population lives, so that's fun. Yeah, because the rest of them live in the country by a lake, and they 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 want to talk to in their the neighbour. They have to fire a flare into the air because that's yeah. how close together they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not making light of it. Sorry. <clears throat> if we didn't laugh, that's we'd the cry. Good part about living in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Yeah, and we still <sighs> get fiber, so that's good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm on fiber optic too. Yay! I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, chaps, I think that constitutes the show. Um, we've gone a fair chunk. I've got no idea when we're going to do this next. Um, I say the Butt Boy review will be coming up. Oh, I did see another one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't shut him up now. <laughs> no, it's just because it, it popped up. I got an email that just popped up on my notifications. Um... Zombieland, Double Tap. I haven't oh, seen yes. that yet. I did see that too. And? <laughs> I did enjoy it. <laughs> what is this? I didn't think it was as good as Zombieland. But, um... No, but it, I, I'd heard some really shitty reviews about it before I went in. Yeah. And um, so I, my expectations had been lowered to such a point that I came out going, that was absolutely fine. It yeah, still it made me chuckle. I mean, yeah, there was a lot of chuckles in it. And Woody Harrelson was funny. And... And with, I, totally had, long. I had convinced myself into a corner that Zombieland 1, the main um, younger girl character, was played by Mila Kunis, not Emma Stone. And I was like, it's so, it's so weird that they changed, changed the actor for that role. I was like, no, they haven't. Oh, yeah, no, they haven't. <laughs> Where the hell did I get that from? I don't know. I, big eyes? I don't know. I just don't know. They both got four and five letters in their name. Uh, wouldn't kick either out of bed for farting I don't know where it comes from honestly I just haven't got a clue just watch just rewrite the movies yeah, yeah. Um, um, but yeah I mean that was that was fun that was 
it was quite funny how it referenced itself yeah. earlier and all that fun stuff in there. But yeah. it didn't do anything that put me off or didn't do anything that made me want to slate it, but it also didn't do anything that made me want to shout his name from the rooftops. So um, yeah. <laughs> that's where it landed. I don't want to live up to in the first one. Say, say someone was generously saying lukewarm about the first one. Would they care about the second one? Would they care? Should Would it I, annoy should, them? No. Should the this hypothetical like person see that movie? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should Timo see the movie? Um, <laughs> Did it make you laugh? Like the characters. Yeah. <laughs> I think you might like the second one more then. Alright, I'll give it a shot when I see it. <laughs> when it gets here eventually, I guess. <laughs> Curious. I hold the phone on that one. I reckon he'll like it more. <laughs> Poisonly. He didn't know just to piss us off. I'll come with the bill the bill actually no, I can't say anything. Uh, <clears throat> no, yeah, yeah. stop. <laughs> <laughs> The bill was huge. It was a very expensive movie. Yeah. That was a wonderful piece. <laughs> that, that was a lot of fun, that bit. Yeah. <clears throat> so, there we are. Right. Um, I'd say send in your feedback, but you never do. But if you wanted to, I think we're still the little pot of horrors at gmail.com. You can try it, see what happens. Uh, otherwise, reach out to Should us on be. social media. Uh, we have some of that, I think. We still have a Facebook page. I know that much because I still stick stupid memes up there occasionally. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully we'll do more. <laughs> what are you doing? I was, he was doing the- him sticking thing- memes up there. Butt boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. This is what it's done to Tim with mind in isolation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's just everything is dirty. Yeah, because yeah. I was not like this before at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the challenge is knowing when we do this next will we'll come down entirely to the fact, do, have we had any time to watch any more stuff? Um, so, once we know, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll try and... Six more months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we might, it might be able to squeeze in one more show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We might consume one more show's worth of content before we're allowed outdoors. <laughs> so, with that said, uh, thank you for joining us and uh, keep in touch and stay safe, everybody. Wash your handies and all that. Bye. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.